Okay, let's get started here. So thank you for participating in this presentation. Uh, my name is Emily Luo, and I'm the technical project manager here from Jacko. And I'll be giving you the presentation for today based on the topics of IP audio solutions. So um, if you have missed it, or you would like to review the previous training course, which is the, um, the introduction of IP audio solution, uh, please feel free to let me know. I believe we have uploaded the video on YouTube, so I would love to send you the video link. Or uh, perhaps you should be able to find it like searching on YouTube, like um, Jekyll IP Audio Solution Introduction, and um, you should able to find it on YouTube. Oops. All right. Okay, and um, let's get started here. So for today's topic, the uh, case studies, I have chosen four different um, cases. And uh, please feel free to let me know if you have any questions, then I would prefer you like type it in the uh, bottom right corner. There's like a little check box. So um, please send the question there and I can like overview the um, all the questions by the end of the presentation. So for the first case study I chose is the wind power forms project that we done in Yunnan, in uh, Yunnan province, uh, China. So for this wind power farm, um, they have 33 uh, turbines, and each hub is um, 69 meter high, so it is like a pretty uh, big and giant uh, hub. So since the farm is located in a Prague 2 area, so the security and safety has become one of the uh, biggest concerns. So for the problem and their domain, if they need to build over um, a hundreds of emergency call points around the farms for response to emergencies and incidents. So in their um, situations, they already have some IP cameras installed in uh, most area like around the farm. And uh, which means the uh, IP camera system they, um, they were currently using has to be able to integrate with the new um, audio systems and um, they prefer to like managing like everything on one platform, like not separating all okay, this one um, system or like one software application that's for the um, the cameras and um, there's another like um, software application that's for the um, the audio. And since we are building the emergency uh, call points here, so the intercom they will be playing a, a big role for the um, emergency call points. So what exactly they wanted to achieve is, um, so there will be like over um, like so many um, emergency call points around the farm. So and for each emergency call point, there will be a intercom installed um, on the emergency call point. So whenever like a person that's in emergency, they can like run up to the emergency call points and push the button on the intercom. Then the intercom will be like directly calling to the control room. So the security staff can like pick up the phones and talk to the persons on another side of the intercom, seeing like what's going on, like do they need help or not, like things like that. So that is basically what they wanted to achieve. So for some uh, approaches here, so uh, for the first approach, since they already have the um, IP cameras installed and um, all of the IP cameras are RTSP supported. So RTSP is a, um, like a standard protocol for audio, uh, like for video streams. So since all of the IP cameras are RTSP supported, so the cameras can be um, registered on our system directly without any like um, third party plugin or like a system integration, things like that. So we can just like getting the IP camera registered on our systems. And also for um, the intercom, we propose them to use the models of IAO3, the one that's without the little cameras, because like they already got the IP cameras installed, so there's no need for them to 
install the um, the another model, the IV03. The one has the um, little cameras on it. So choosing the models of IA03 is a more suitable and like more um, um, like a, a more suitable solution in this case. And also we propose them to use our systems and our coherence um, software applications. So using our systems, we will be able to register all the uh, intercoms and the IP cameras on our systems, and we are able to monitoring like all the endpoints started. Are they online or they offline? And uh, we are able to like viewing all the uh, real time image from the IP cameras on our software application as well. So um, also for direct communication purpose, we will be requiring you to use uh, one zip phone. Um, like one zip phones or like a zip mic or like any um, two-way audio endpoints that you can like actually like talk and listen with to work with the dispatch console. So for the whole solution, it is a combination of hardware and software components. For the hardware section, um, I believe they have used somewhere around like 80, like 80 ish of our SIP intercoms, the models of IA03 and one for each emergency call point. And also um, they have purchased a several of our SIP phones, the models of H83 to work with the um, dispatch console. For the software section, um, they have used our systems um, with additional license package. So for some information about the uh, the license package, so for our standard license package, we have the 30. So 30 licenses for the standard package. Besides the standard package, we also have the additional license package. So for the additional, we got the we got the 10, 10 licenses and the 100 licenses additional package. So in their case, I believe they have used um, one standard and several of our additional license package um, there. And also using our coherent um, software application, the dispatch console. So um, for the dispatch console, it is a um, desktop software. So you can like download and install it as many times as you need. So there's like not a, um, there's no limitation that you can actually like how many times you can download like or how many computers you can use the dispatch console. There's no uh, limitations on that. And uh, for some um, feature highlights and here's on the diagram is showing like how basically the whole solution works. So for our IP audio center, it is a uh, system. So you need to deploy on a hardware server or a cloud-based server. So in their case, I believe they installed the IP audio center system in a uh, AWS, a cloud-based server, and using the uh, PoE switch for connecting to all the um, endpoints. And um, they have installed the dispatch console, the software application on the uh, control room desktop and using our SIP phones to work around with the dispatch console. So whenever a person that is in emergency, they push the button on the intercom. So the intercom will be directly calling to the SIP phone. So the and so the security staff can pick up the phone and um, answering to the person on the other side of the intercom, say, um, hello, what can I do for you? Things like that, are you okay? Um, Things like that, and also it will be directly pulling out the camera that is surrounding with the um, the uh, intercom. So the security staff will be also able to viewing all the real time image um, on the dispatch console as well. So and also moving um, on the diagram, moving to the right side, we can see that um, they have used one IP camera and one uh, zip intercom for um, each hub, like for, I mean, like for each emergency call point. So some feature highlights here. So uh, video linkage, so we are able to ask and request the third party's IP cameras and um, recording for the real time image. However, for our system, we do not store 
or save any of the video files because like, um, the um, design purpose is we believe 99.9% .9 of the video system, they already have the, um, the storage feature. They store the uh, video files, so there's no need like for our to copy, like to save a copy or like to duplicate the video files here. And um, so for emergency intercom, that is the main purpose for this case. And also like central centralized management and real time monitoring from our dispatch console. So from our dispatch console, we are able to see like all the endpoint statics and also viewing like all the um, cameras image. And moving um, on to our second case study. So um, it is a industry project that we done in Shanghai. So for the Shanghai Tiantan Assurian uh, industry, it is one of the oldest and biggest materials large uh, chemical industry in China, especially in um, Shanghai, they are pretty famous. So for a lot of uh, products that we are like coatings or like medications we use in China, it's produced, produced by the um, Tiantan um, Assurians. They have over 60 categories and more than 250 kinds of products. So they are pretty um, famous in um, in China. And for their problem and their request is, um, they were building a couple of new, like brand new uh, buildings and they need a PA system for making, such, like such as for making announcements, like also like scheduled announcements, paging, broadcasting, or playing uh, background music. Etc. So in their situations, they were using a um, third party IP systems and also some IP endpoints like IP speaker and IP um, cameras in their like already exceeding old um, buildings. And um, for the when like for the new buildings, they need the um, new endpoints that and also the endpoint has to be able to integrate with their currently using IP uh, system, so they can like managing all the endpoints on one platform and they are able to use their current IP system to make the announcements throughout um, this new endpoint as well. So due to um, like budget consumption, they were forcing to use another brand of um, endpoints. So they have uh, chosen us. So for some approaches here, so uh, we propose them to use our both um, SC15, the sewing, uh, yes, the sewing network sewing speaker and the SW15, the network cognitive speaker. So there's two ways that we can um, register or like, I mean, like for um, integrating our endpoint into the um, currently using IP system. So for the first one would be multicast, and um, the second one would be the SIP enabled it. So since the IP system is not SIP enabled it, so we have to use the multicast. So for using the multicast might be sounds a little bit complicated, but it, in fact, it's not that um, complicated. So for each endpoint, it has the uh, multicast address. So for what all we need to do is to copy the endpoint multicast address and pasting this multicast address onto the IP systems and then the IP system is able to link with the endpoints and making like such like making announcements or like um broadcasting paging and things like that. And um also since they do not need to use our software or like our systems and um so there's no need to purchase the license in this case. So for um, the solution for this case is um, hardware only. They purchased the 21 of our SB15 speaker and also another 10 additional 10 SW15, the uh, common speakers. So for some uh, feature highlights here, so from the um, 
diagrams we can see from the uh, left to the middle is the whole set of IP systems plus the IP endpoints they were using in their like already exiting buildings. And um, our endpoint would be able to integrate with their systems using the multicast. So from the feature highlight, the multicasting is um, is the um, primary here. And also from the multicast, we'll be able to do We'll be able to do the um, schedule the pageant. It will be depends on the um, the third party's IP system. See if they have the schedule the paging um, features, and also we're able to do like uh, emergency announcements, schedule the announcements, background music, etc. And also for centralized management, um, our endpoint is able to integrate with a third party system, so they can like centralize. Um, like managing all the endpoints on um, one platform and also for cost saving. So moving to the next case um, study, so Olympic project that we done in Macau. So the Special Olympic it is a global nonprofit organization which helps um, athletes who with um, disabilities. So and for the Macau Special Olympic, they are in a two-story building and they need a public address system for making um, announcements and also schedule that announcements such as they wanted to um, make a announcements on every Friday at 3 p.m. saying, okay, kids, have a nice weekend. Um, so for the um, domain and their request is besides the, um, <clears throat> so um, in their situation, they were already using a whole set of analog systems, um, the analog um, speakers and also the amplifiers around the buildings and they would like a upgrade on top of these um, analog systems. So they are able to make like schedule their announcements and also like playing background music for some events such as fundraising. And um, besides upgrading the, um, the PA systems, they will also like to install some um, outdoor speaker in their parking lot. So there were no um, speakers in their parking lot, and sometimes they do need to make the uh, announcements in their parking lot. So for some uh, approach here, so since we need to um, work around with the analog systems, so um, we need the paging gateways for translating the analog signals to the IP signals. So for each amplifier, it will be requiring to use one of our paging gateways. And, um, and also adding some additional outdoor speaker in their parking lot. And also we propose them to use our system so they are able to like managing uh, both the, the um, paging gateways and also the outdoor horn speaker on one platform. So, and they can also use our dispatch console for playing like background music and scheduled it, um, announcements and um, emergency announcements, et cetera. So for this case study, it's similar to the, um, the first case study we went through. It is a combination of hardware and software solutions. So for the uh, hardware section, um, the X study, the Paging gateway, I believe they have used somewhere around like seven to nine. I couldn't remember the exact number. It's like um, seven to nine. The paging gateways and each gateway is connected with one amplifier. And also they purchased it, purchased it six additional SH30, the SIP horn um, speakers to install in their parking lot. And for the software section, they were using um, our system with the minimum or the standard package licenses. 
and um, also using our dispatch console, the um, coherent software application, and install it in different department desktop. So um, each department is able to make their own announcements. So and here is how um, the whole solutions look like. They installed our IP audio center, the system, in a hardware server that is located in their, um, their school. And using the PoE switch to connecting to um, the endpoint. And um, install our dispatch console in different department's desktop. So each department is have, it has the priority to make their own announcements to the specific um, paging zones. And also using our cell phone to make the um, live announcements. And uh, moving uh, towards to the uh, right side of the diagram, saying um, so one cell paging gateway is connected with one amplifier, and also the amplifier is still connecting to the like analog speakers. And uh, we have the network horn speaker installed outside of the building um, in the parking lot. So for some feature highlights here, we got the scheduled paging um, features um, achieved. So we can make some like scheduled paging, um, like scheduled announcement on every Friday or like every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we can do it. And um, also they are able to separate into different paging zones. So for our system, we support unlimited paging zones. So you can create as many as you need putting all the speaker on the first floor into one paging zone and all the speakers on the second floor into a second group. And also we can do like um, live announcements and also um, cost saving is a big plus. We have to be using the SIP paging database here to connect with the analog, um, uh, the amplifiers. So there's no need to like replacing the whole set of analog speakers so we can still like keep using the analog speakers and the amplifier. So we just need like a one paging gateway for translating the signals. And uh, for our last case study I chose is the Call My project that we done in Gansu. So for this um, Gansu book Call My, um, there annual production capacity is 2.5 million times per year. And for the request, they need a broadcasting feature. So for this case study, it's slightly different comparing to the previous three cases study we went through. So in their case and their request, they only need the broadcasting feature for making emergency announcements, such as, okay, all people, um, need to leave immediately, right? They do not need the scheduled announcements feature and they do not need the background music feature. And also um, they need the um, horn speaker, the outdoor horn speakers and um, two requirements for the horn speaker. I will be, the first one would be waterproof. It has to be waterproof. And um, the second would be same proof because they are in a coal mine. And um, also they were using our Deco um, PBX. They purchased our PBX in 2015, uh, five years ago, and are still booking five. So they would like to build this uh, broadcasting feature on top of the PBX and they don't want it to purchase like any um, system licenses or using a um, new system. So we, what go wrong with it? So for some uh, approaches here. So since they're using our U50, the um, U50 PBS is the part um, 100 SIP account, uh, SIP account registration. So there's no need. So in their case, it's good enough. And there's no need to switch or replace a new uh, PBS. So 100 um, SIP registration account is um, fair enough. And um, also uh, making the registration for the speaker to on to the PBX system is would be um, exactly the same like how you registering a IP phone. 
um, on a PBS system. So it would be just like replacing the fifth speaker into um, the, the IP phones. And also we are able to dispatch the speaker into different patient zones. So they can still like dial in different um, patient zones number. So let's say I can dial like 001 for um, patient zone one and 002 for patient zone two. And um, also making the um, live announcements or like the broadcasting using their current IP phone. So there's no need to like purchase and um, a additional phone, but in their case, I believe they have purchased a couple additional phones from us. So here's how the solution looks like. We um, they purchased 35 of our SH30, the horn speaker, and um, also two additional H81 SIP phones, and making the um, speaker register on our IP IP PBS, and using the phones for making announcements. For some, um, so in this diagram, it's pretty um, simple and straightforward. We have our speaker um, using the PoE switch for connecting and um, for connections, and um, we address our on speakers onto our IP PBS, and also the IP phones is also registered on our IP PBS. So for some feature highlights here, um. The first one, of course, we got the cost saving. So we do not need to purchase the um, another uh, for the, like the uh, software licenses. We, so in their case, they only need to purchase the horn speakers and a couple of the additional um, IP phones. And also we can use the IP phones for making like emergency announcements and broadcasting. And also like centralized management and real time monitoring. Okay, and um, for last night, I have added a couple of um, new slides for this presentation is um, the ideas of like how our IP audio solution is able to help people to um, to cause this like um, outbreak, the COVID-19. So using our, um, so using our solutions, um, we are able to make emergency announcements um, throughout different um, areas. So let's say if you like, if you hold like different um, office and you were using the analog um, systems in these buildings and wherever it's like you want to make announcements, um, you need to go all the way to the control rooms and make the announcements um, through the amplifiers. But for using our system, since we are IP based, you can actually um, download the dispatch console on your desktop at home. So you don't need to leave your home for making the announcements. And also um, through the dispatch console that is on your desktop and at your home, you can also like controlling the uh, background music and also like monitoring all the cameras and seeing like how the office um, looks like. Um, on the dispatch console from one pen node, so you don't need like go all the way um, to your office, or you don't even need to like live in your house to finish this whole set of actions. And also for um, our systems, we support unlimited patient zones. So if you hold like different locations, and um, you my you are a, I mean like you are able to dispatch. Um, <clears throat> the um, the endpoints into different paging zones. So you got like building A, then you can, you can and then you can make the announcements to only building A, or you may like making the announcements to both building A and building B, and we can also do it. So for the next um, training. So the next training would be the technical training. So I have divided the technical training into three different sections. So for the, sec for the first section would be the um, installation and also basic configurations on the IP audio center system. So I will um, 
doing so I will guide you through where to download the um the, the ISO files and also how to install the um the IP audio centers on like into your servers and also making the basic configuration such as like um how to dispatch into like different I mean like how to create um different paging zones and also how to register in different dispatch user accounts and also I will be uh, demonstrating how um, to like register a endpoint onto our system. And for the second um, section, um, it will be more focusing on the IP audio dispatch console and also the dispatch app. So I will be um, using the dispatch console for demonstrating like um, some basic features such as like playing back the music, like where you need to upload the music files and where to choose the music file to play from. And um, also like um, using your SIP phone for making live announcements, um, etc. So for the third section would we'll be more focusing on some like advanced features such as like um, how do you like make a scheduled announcement on every um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And also um, how to use our X10 Sip Paging Gateway for external audio source. So that means um, using our X10, you can be like playing the music files from your phone through the speakers, or you might, uh, or you can play the music files from your computer using a 3.5 mm jack. So one end of the 3.5 mm jack will be connecting to the um, computer and uh, another end will be connecting to the F10, the SIP paging gateway for playing the back, for, <coughs> for playing the music files. And also I will be showing you like how to like register a third party IP camera onto our systems and you can actually like pulling out the IP cameras image onto our console. So that is the um, basically the whole structure for the technical training. So, and for the technical training, it will be happening in uh, November, but we haven't decided on the exact day yet. It will be depending on um, how many people is going to register for this technical training. So if you guys are interested in this training, please feel free to contact Vivian and um, she will inform you the exact date. I guess that is all my presentation is. All right, question time. 